All right, guys. Welcome to uh, season seventy-eight, week eight action. Saints and Falcons should be a tough one. D Money is a hell of a player, even though he's having a bad season. This guy is a championship guy. So we'll see. Did my homework on him, but uh, you never know. First open back in 1975. There's a look inside the iconic Mercedes-Benz Superdome in downtown New Orleans. Nothing like the fanfare of introductions to an NFL game. And that have. was in evidence a moment ago. Not Fire had to receive any kicking. You name it, this crowd is ready as their guys get set to match up between the Atlanta Falcons and the New Orleans Saints. He's up past the 20 to the 22-yard line. I forgot I got to change that. This guy's my starting receiver. Can't have him doing punt and kick returns. All right, sorry about that, D-Money. First down is Breeze. And it's a short one here, complete to his tight end. And they'll bring him down at the 27 yard line. Five yards on the catch there brings up second down. Second and five after the five yard completion on first down. There's Breeze. Throwing middle. Are you kidding me? Like, he got caught up in the blitz so much. <laughs> it'll wind up being yeah. a loss of two, and it'll be third down. What a joke. Shotgun now for Breeze. This time for Smith, and it's intercepted. Picked off at the 35. Certainly not how they envisioned ending their opening drive here in the first quarter. Too many ones in this play. First what a play, joke. First drive, first interception thrown. And that last one, that hurts. All out blitz, and I can't get it on an out route. <laughs> Ball up to the 35 now as they come up on first and 10. Ito Smith, his first carry. And able to push his way forward here for a good little game. Demario Davis there on the stop. I call that play a success. A nice inside run sets up a very manageable second down. A very solid gain on that play. And 
And they'll try the ground game here with the running back. And he'll get about three as he's brought down to the 28. Well, so many times we look at a short run and we praise the offense for trying to set the tempo and establish things. But the defensive guys, hey, they just won the battle there. It wasn't a big run given up. They don't always have to absorb the body blow. Sometimes they dish them out themselves. Six, and it's a first down. So when you saw him dump it off to the back, did you think he was going to pick up the first down there? <laughs> well, I knew one thing. It wasn't his primary target. At least it didn't look like it. Turned out to be the play they needed, though. And it's big because it's the opening drive. So converting that third down, keeping the play, not the play, the drive going. Yeah, it certainly appeared like his downfield targets were covered. He threw the little dump off to, the, to his back. And nice effort picking up the first down, though. And you're right. That opening drive, keep those chains moving. And he'll go on the ground. And brought down, but not before they get it inside. It's going to be one of those days, huh? It's really going to be nice one of those days. Pick up, and now it's first and goal. Usually we see runs like this as the defense breaks down later in the game, but this guy is setting the tone early, running through all types of tackles and put the defense back on its heels. A first chance in the red zone for the Falcons now. They've got it first and goal at the seventh. Ryan. That's going to go as a loss of four, and it'll be second down. So they get pushed back to the 11, and here's second and goal. Now Ryan. And that is caught. Touchdown, Falcons. Josh Hill, his first touchdown on the year. And the Falcons have taken the early lead. And he is a reliable target. They like to get him involved. They got him involved there for a score. I don't even know how that's possible. Remember, they can there should have been two players in that zone. Spots, and he usually comes through for them. Extra point right down the middle. And it's now a 7-0 game. Out is the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. Fielded about a yard deep. And nice work on the return as they'll start their drive just past the 30-yard line. Out onto the field comes New Orleans. And following the interception, just any interception, are you a little bit more cautious when you start that next drive or no? You just throw that out the window. I think you are. I don't think that there's any way you can run back out there and go, ah, totally didn't affect me. Let's just go ahead and be loose with the football again. You're going to take care of it, but you have to be careful about being too cautious because now you can't run any offense mm -hmm. at all. Still want to attack. We'll see how they attack them here. They go back to the air here after the INT on the last drive. He gets this one complete to Traquan Smith. The drive starting with a first down, 11 yards on that pickup. Hello. Okay, why do they call you? I don't know, I guess my number's on the phone. I don't understand you. No, I gave him my phone number. I mean, I don't know. Either way, you're going to put the word but you got to give him your number. Yeah, yeah, I understand. Yeah. Right. I don't know. That's the only card I have, just FYI. That's why I ain't going to try it. They'll run it for the first time with Alvin right. Kamara. And the play goes nowhere. Losing yardage back near the 40 at the 39. The loss of a full three yards, and now it's second down. On 
Second down, Kamara. And able to get a couple as he's across the 40 to the 41. Early down stuff to put this offense in a precarious position. We know that securing the point of attack, especially against the big body guys in the middle of this D, has got to be priority one. Third down, a nickel formation here defensively. From the gun, it's Breeze. He rifles one that's intercepted. T.J. Green with a pick. And they have the football and will set up shop at the 33-yard line. Well, they didn't exactly show patience there, did they? Just down a score, they come out firing right away and compound things by throwing an interception. They put their defense in a really tough spot. Ryan will bring the Falcons up now, first and 10 at the 33 yard line. And they'll go with a ground attack here. And he's going to be taken down here with a penalty flag on the field. So on the big tight end, hold it. Each and every year, we talk about very few tight ends coming into the league that are polished blockers or asked to do it a lot in college. So it's a constant struggle and a constant fight to learn how to do it without holding. They're backed up here with a first and 20 now after the holding penalty. To throw is Ryan. And his throw is incomplete. It's a lot of contact going on there. And in the end, unable to keep two hands on the football and bring it into his body. Everything looked pretty good until the finish. So they'll come up after the incompletion for second down. Play action, Ryan. And he'll be hit from behind and taken down. I spent a lot of extra time preparing for this game, watching this offensive line, because they gave up five sacks last week in their loss. They just gave up another one now. They don't seem to be working together as a cohesive unit, right? Four guys might have it right, but the fifth guy is giving something up. They've got to find a way to all get on the same page. So the sack pushes him back, and now third and long for Ryan and the Falcons. From the gun, it's Ryan. It's incomplete. <laughs> Took a shot, couldn't connect. How about this offense already feeling good about themselves with a touchdown already in their first drive? They've certainly come out firing, even though that one was incomplete. With the 7-0 lead, more apt to take a shot like that downfield? Hey, you're one to the good. Go ahead and try and pressure advantage. The punter Bosher on now as he gets this one away. Out onto the field comes New Orleans. And it's been a miserable start for them offensively, obviously. Two drives, two interceptions. And this is where you have to know your quarterback and know how you actually have to reach him. Do you do it with a little bit of humor? Maybe you break the ice a little bit like, hey, didn't we practice in that color jersey all week, <laughs> not the one that you're throwing it to? Or maybe you have to be stern with him. But whatever it's going to take to get the message, it has to be done. He's putting the game in jeopardy. They begin on the ground with Kamara. And no room that time, getting it to about the 46. Tackle made by Devondre Campbell. I don't think any of us were surprised that they decided to start this drive on the ground after the last two drives ended in interceptions. Unfortunately, though, not a lot going on on that first play. Yeah, I think the anticipation was felt also by the defense. Get set, get 
Breeze leaves this one with Kamara. And he works his way forward for about four up to the midfield stripe. We haven't seen much from him running the football here in this first quarter. No, you're right about that. We haven't seen much of him at all so far. They've stacked him up pretty well, but when you're trying to run the football, sometimes you've got to play the long game. Keep handing it to him, and some of those runs that aren't working now, they turn into six, seven, eight, and maybe more later on. to the tight end. And he'll get it into enemy territory just across midfield at the 49. Brandon, perfect defense in this situation would have meant that there was an incompletion they would have picked it off. Okay, so they gave up the completion. But I really enjoyed watching how the defense stayed in sync, stayed in great communication. And as he dragged across each zone, you see him pointing, communicating. There he is. And they passed him off to each defender. <sighs> Ended up making a nice play even though it was complete. Here comes the Atlanta offense now ready to take over here. And on the last go around, they really couldn't get anything going. They had to punt from deep inside their own territory, which means you're going to lose the field position battle as a general rule. What they're looking for now is a little more consistency, move the ball at least a few times on offense, get a couple of first downs, and hopefully flip the field. Yeah, just something to build off of. That's what they're looking for here. Ryan and the Falcons now come up first and 10 at their own 20-yard line. They'll start on the ground. It's Edo Smith. And he's got some space here. And they're going to get this beyond the 40 before he's taken down. 23 yards on the pickup there and a first. Dance class, anyone? <laughs> Did you see the steps between the quarterback and the running That's back what you on need that counter, for a good play? counter You have to have it because you're setting up your blocking. There's a timing element as well, but they have to marry up their steps. Otherwise, that timing gets thrown out the window. Timing was great there and a big run. One play has him up past the 40 already and another first and 10. And on the ground they go with the running back. And he'll take this one across the 45 up to about the 46-yard line. Marcus Davenport there to take him down. What's the old expression? Three yards in a cloud of dust? In this case, it's dust-covered pellets. It's no longer that old grass that we used to play on right and chew it up. Now we've got that artificial surface. You see the pellets go up. Still a nice play by the defense. Second down, here's Smith. And he'll fight his way forward to about the 48-yard line. Alongside Charles Davis, Brandon Gordon, it's the Falcons in possession to begin quarter number two. They've got a third down and five to start things out. <clears throat> find someone to get rid of the football before he knew it he was on his back so that just brings us right back to what you said in the beginning a great job defensively nowhere to go with the football that led to the sack here's matt bosher now as he'll punt it away for the second time Out onto the field comes New Orleans. And our game's hit a little bit of a lull here, a little bit of a snag. Punts on back-to-back -back drives. And old-school coaches don't necessarily mind that. Didn't turn it over, right? Didn't create a big play for the other team. 
Right now, what you're looking ready. for ready. is can you gain an advantage in field position? And that's what both teams are seeking right now. Yeah, they'll be seeking. And for the third time here this half, it's intercepted. Unbelievable. God. And he'll return it to the 24-yard line. Ah, Brandon, this is a veteran quarterback back there. He should know better than to make a throw like this. This is definitely not his best ball. And I think he knew this was trouble the second it was leaving his hand. Unbelievable. After the interception, here's Ryan. And he'll win it over the middle. And he'll be a couple yards shy of the red zone here at the 22-yard line. Give him a couple on the catch. It's second and eight. So second and eight here after the pass play for two yards on first down. Ryan. And finding the tight end Hooper. <laughs> Are you kidding me, man? At the 13 yard line. His first catch, good for eight and a first down. <laughs> I got kicked out of that one, partner. You and I talk often about trying to hide receivers in certain situations, but a guy of his size can't really hide him. But the tight end drag route, definitely an effective way to sneak him across the formation for an easy completion and a first down. stopped right around the 13 just a yard on the first down carry so it's second and nine i know the speed is the hallmark of today's nfl game but the key to good rushing defense is still having your linebackers set the edge I love it. I'm turning this off. Escaping the danger, running with it, and picking up a first down. Partner, he was going through his progressions. Not there, not there. After about the third one, he decided he better pull it down and run for it. And he slides down and avoids the hit for good measure. before he could get out of the backfield. Double this guy has to be a priority before moving up to the next level because the big fella, he just ate that one alive, just stuffed it. In fact, before the game, he was talking to us and he's like, hey, these pants make me look fat. And we said, nah, man, you're just a whole lot of guy. He is at well over 300 pounds. He's a big man. Back at the five-yard line now, second and goal. Hey, hey. Go. Now they'll throw it with Ryan. Ryan hit, and he lost the football. On plays like this where the ball comes free, it's often unusual for the team that lost it to get it back because this is, this is the quarterback. The ball gets away from him. Everyone else is trying to execute what they're supposed to do on offense. They're usually looking in the other direction, downfield, or have moved away from him. In this case, though, a teammate is able to come up with the ball. The crowd here in the dome making things difficult. Third and goal. Here's Ryan to throw. And he's going to be brought down just shy of the five at the six. It'll be a two-yard gain, and that's going to make it fourth down. 
So out now comes the field goal unit for the Falcons. From the right hash, and this one just a chippy. And his kick is good. And the lead moves to 10 zip. That drive took him inside to 10. Good job defensively to hold him to three. Yeah, I like how you did that. Give a little tip of the cap to the stop troops there because they didn't give up a touchdown in that situation, right? Made them kick the field goal. And yeah, points went against them, but that feels a whole lot better running off the field. And he'll wind up getting an extra couple yards here for his trouble as he'll bring this one out to the 27. Out onto the field comes New Orleans. And last time wasn't pretty. One play and an interception. We'll see if they can do better. I want to see if they want to go ahead and throw the ball again now on this drive after what happened on the last one. Throw it on the first play. Give the quarterback <laughs> some confidence. See what happens. So Bree's going to lead the Saints up here first and 10 at their own 27. Try to shake off the interception. He'll look to throw. Fitzgerald bringing it in over the middle. First play of the drive going for 14 and also going for a first down. I think it all came together there. In breaking route. Drove it with excellent pace. Money throw right there to move the sticks. down carry it's hill and not much there at all maybe a yard up to the 43 they tried a quick hitter inside but that one was swallowed up because what they're hoping those big defensive linemen will take the bait and move laterally and open up a crease that they can run through didn't happen on that play get set, get set, get set. Now Breeze throwing on second down. And for the fourth time tonight, it's an interception. It's Desmond Trufant. And he will score. Touchdown, Falcons. I don't know who all is to blame there, but I love seeing pick sixes. Nothing like seeing someone pluck it out of the air and go the other way and see people try to change directions. Hard to do. Extra point splits the uprights, and the decision to just kick the extra point winds up successful. Well, we looked at each other right away. We knew that flag was coming out. And I always enjoy the conversation post, because officials always tell you, I don't want to throw the flag, but you caused the play. You did it. I had to. Back out onto the field now comes the New Orleans offense. They're sort of seeing themselves spiral out of control. Let's see if they can get things back on track. And this is where the coach is walking that line of being calm and really being firm with his team. I had one tell me once, you know, when we were having a tough patch, this two shall pass, this two shall pass, and it finally kept having a rough patch. He said, but you've got to do something <laughs> Heads up. to make it pass. And that's what they have to do. They've got to get some control back, get themselves reasserted, and calm things down. See if the pressure brought in, and the Falcons get there for the sack. Three scores down, not even a halftime yet. They're not getting much generated offensively. They've got to figure it out. It's tough because this, this defense just seems to be playing with so much confidence right now. They really are. They are on their toes, and they're getting at them. They'll come up after the sack on a second and 12. Working from the gun, it's Breeze. Oh, he's got a man wide open, complete. Touchdown, New Orleans. Colby Lissenby, his first touchdown on the year. And the Saints are able to strike quickly for six. As a former DB, you might not like to see that, but from a wide receiver's perspective, those are the plays they dream of. Correct on both counts, <laughs> all right? Because once he took off, I mean, let's face it, that should have been done in big sky country. There aren't any speed <laughs> limits out there. And off he went. Glad I wasn't the one trying to chase him. Lux with the extra point, and that'll cut the lead to 17-7. Lutz now to kick this one away. 
This fielded a few yards into the end zone. And it's a pretty good return here as he'll get it up to the 29-yard line. So out come the Falcons now. And they had three points last time, but they didn't want three points because they were well within range of scoring a touchdown. We'll see if they can do better now. I'm with you on that one. Let's just go ahead and be frank about the whole thing. The only one happy about the three-point... The kicker. Exactly. <laughs> he put it through the post. That's going to help him at contract time. But that offense, they're thinking, let's get in the end zone this time. I don't know if that helped him at contract time. You, you could have kicked that one through. I don't know about that. <laughs> toe bash. I don't know about toe that. Toe bashed it. <laughs> Super toe. Ready to go. They begin with a run by Smith, and they take him down, losing yardage back at the 27. A loss of a full three yards, and now it's second down. I like the strategy. Extra tight ends, extra beef. They want to run the football, but that means they probably want to run it inside. If you get strung out on the perimeter, you're in peril. Yeah, we saw the result, negative yardage. A three-yard loss to start the drive. They'll look to make that up, and then some on second and 13. And they'll go ground game here with a tailback. And room to run as he's up past the 35-yard line. Nine good yards here on the run, and now third down. But you've got to give kudos to your offensive line and the guy carrying the ball because they were in a second and long situation. It seemed pretty dire, but they brought it back to third and manageable with that run. Two minutes remain here in the first half. We're back to New Orleans after this. The Falcons on third down. They've only converted once in four tries. This is third and four. From the shotgun, Ryan. And it's complete. Hooper. And they're going to have this across midfield and inside the 45. And a nice gain of 21 yards. And he's the epitome of what we call the move tight end. A guy that you can line up anywhere. In the slot, out wide, in tight. Doesn't really matter because he has such great skills. You want to utilize him in all aspects of your passing offense. And there he was in the slot for the catch. here on first down and this is caught by Martavis Bryant he got 29 yards that time they hit that crossing route really well excellent timing puts it right on him and he keeps running yeah turned it upfield for good yardage From the red zone now, here's Ryan on first down. And it's caught. And they corral him just a couple yards shy of the end zone. Back-to-back -back nice plays, 12 yards that time and a first down.
Again, Ryan. And that is incomplete. 16 seconds now on the clock. I hope I don't sound too rah-rah on that one, but that's the exact right throw. Either your receiver gets it or no one gets it. Give him a lot of credit for being really precise with it. Got rid of it. No one got it. Second and goal, and they will try again from the two-yard line. Julio Jones, the lone receiver left. Ryan will throw again. And that'll be incomplete. We do have a penalty flag down, however. Let's see what that's about. Trying to disrupt Julio Jones there, the intended target. A little too close, got the flag thrown. I'm not sure anyone can cover Julio Jones one-on-one -on -one for very long without getting their share of pass interference calls. His size, his speed, his physicality makes it almost impossible to do. They come out here in the eye. Throwing again, Ryan. And he's got his star receiver. It's Jones for the Falcon touchdown. Julio Jones as the first half is winding down. And the Falcons will add on to their lead. Out comes the kicking team here for the extra point. Point after, right down the middle. And the decision to just kick the extra point winds up successful. Set now to kick this one away, and off it goes. This will be taken in at the one. And he'll take it past the 25 and up to the 28-yard line. The Saints offense now. They get ready to head back onto the field. And from this spot in the field with the clock where it's at, you think we're just going to see a knee and that's it? And I think in this situation, that's the proper play. But we do know there's some risk takers out there that may want to take one more shot before the clock runs out. And with time running short here, they'll simply take a knee and that should do it for half number one. So we have reached halftime now with the visiting Falcons out on top as we send John over to Orlando for Jonathan Coachman at our EA Sports Halftime Report. Take it away, Coach. All right, Coach, thank you, and we welcome everyone back for quarter number three. The Falcons back to receive. They've got the lead, and they'll get this football as the second half gets underway. That's fielded in the end zone. And he'll take it up past the 25 to the 26-yard line. And here now come the Falcons. This is sort of what you would call a put-away drive, isn't it? They score here, especially a touchdown. It's almost out of reach. It certainly feels that way, and I think that they're going to call their plays accordingly because what you really want to do, even though you know the scoreboard is still up there and the game's going to go on, if you can take the spirit away from another team, that their drive and will to come back and win can be taken with another score right here. It's still third quarter, but you just get that feel. Yeah, they're teetering right there on the brink, aren't they? Two yards on the carry there. It'll be second down. They tried a quick hitter inside, but that one was swallowed up because what they're hoping, those big defensive linemen will take the bait and move laterally and open up a crease that they can run through. Didn't happen on that play. And they'll try the ground game here with the running back. And able to break one tackle, but then quickly brought down. Just a one-yard pickup there, and it's going to make it third down at six. They know that old expression, it's not my night. It hasn't been his so far. I don't know if the legs are a little bit heavy. Sometimes having to hang out all day and play doesn't exactly play to your advantage, but it's been a tough go. go for him. And every time he looks up, somebody's there defensively. That was the same case on that play. 
Third down, Ryan. And the Saints pressure gets him. Brought down for a sack. To me, the defense was a little gas near the end of the first half, but they've come out of the locker room with a little extra spring in their step. Wonder what they did at halftime to get them so motivated. I don't know, but that sack looked good. Now let's see if they can build on the momentum of that play. Here's Matt Bosher now as he's on to punt for Atlanta. This is fielded at the 27. A 46-yard punt, 8 yards on the return. And the Saints will take over with a first down and 10. Now the attention turns to the Saints offense getting ready for their first possession of the second half. They were able to get the stop defensively. Now a chance really to set the tone here in quarter three. They can really take charge, can't they? And this is probably how it was drawn up at the half. I think we can go inside the locker room, all right? <laughs> and I think we would see up on the grease boards, stop them defensively, get the ball back for the offense, and let's go downfield and score. Seems simple, right? The last part, we have to find out that's going to happen. But the first part worked to perfection. Did exactly what they wanted, and now their offense has to pay it off. Let's see if they can get the latter 50%. The tackle made there by Tack McKinley. Tough first half for him, unable to put up the numbers he's used to producing. But with a guy like him, you and I both know it just takes a couple of explosive touches for him to make an impact on this game and on the stat sheet as well. Second down, here's Breeze. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. It's a pickup of 16 there, and it'll lead to a new set of downs. First down, Breeze. Broken tackle over the middle to Smith. That throw good for four. It's second down. Four yards on that last completion, so that sets up second and six. A give. This is Kamara. And nothing doing. He's immediately taken down at the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play there, so they're left with a third down and six. That's it, baby. That's it. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. Now Breeze on third down. Wide open receiver complete. And he'll get this one down near the 20-yard line. Just shy of the 20. The 21 yards there as they convert on third. To throw, it's Breeze. He couldn't quite hold it. Got hit. Ball pops out. Incomplete. The beauty of being able to play a zone defense when you can sit back and see the ball coming out of the quarterback's hands, 
guess what? Creates a lot of confusion. Kind of a muddle in the middle of the field where you can go make a play on the football. So after the incompletion, second and 10 from the 22. Back to the air on second down. It's Breeze. Incomplete. The effort's always going to be there. Everyone's always going to try and make a catch, but underthrown balls, I think, are the toughest ones to come back and get because usually your momentum's going in the opposite direction when you're trying to stop, break, and come back and get it. This offense was on the move. Now two straight incompletions have them looking at third and ten. Again, they'll throw with Breeze. Nowhere to turn this time, and he goes down. Sack back of the 29. Tech McKinley in there to drop him for a six-yard loss, and that'll lead to a fourth down. His kick is good, and that will close the gap down to 14. So a good drive there to begin quarter number three, but they're only able to shave three points off the lead. Well, something's better than nothing, all right? They didn't play particularly well in the first half, but they definitely need him to step on the accelerator now and play a whole lot better. This is fielded a couple yards deep. And all that worked, but he stopped where he ultimately would have been, and he simply taken a knee, and that's the 25-yard line. Here are the Falcons as their offense heads back onto the field. They've got the lead. Last time had to punt it, though. What's the key to this drive? I think it's leverage. Ah, the leverage. big guys up front. You know the motivational speech on the sideline is, guys, give us an opportunity. Protect the passer, create space for our runners, and let's go ahead and get these guys. Low man wins. Let's go do it on this drive. <laughs> we'll watch that leverage on this drive. And he'll get this one up to the 26. Tackle there by Alex Angeloni. I know the scouting report on him is that he doesn't possess the eye discipline to be an elite linebacker. What that means is his ability to read, react, and make a play. But on that one, he looked like one of those guys. Staying on the ground, this time it's Smith. And able to stay on his feet past the 30 to about the 33-yard line. It's a gain of six, moves him to a manageable third and two situation. sack it looks like they'll be forcing another one as well absolutely maybe got their second win coming out of the locker room there's matt bosher now as he's on to punt for the fourth time tonight first kick 47 this one looks good as well and we'll see what he can do on the return nice job bringing that one back 14 on the return and out will come the offense as they take over out onto the field comes New Orleans. And tough to win games if you're going field goal, field goal, field goal here. They got field goal last time. Now they'll be looking for a touchdown. They're looking for the big chunk now because, as you noted, the field goal, field goal, field goal way of doing it makes it that much harder and puts more pressure on every possession for you now. Go ahead and get six and feel a lot more comfortable about the position they're in. Bigger chunks. We'll see if they can get the score. Now Breeze. Got his man complete over the middle. It's Fitzgerald. And he'll get it into enemy territory just across midfield at the 49. Ten yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down.
So second in inches after that first down completion went just shy of the marker. Shotgun now for Breeze. On the check down, he finds Camaro. And he'll be taken down at the 44-yard line. At five yards on the play there as the drive will continue. And we see another pitch and catch there to the running back. This position just continues to evolve. They've become just as critical to the passing attack as a lot of receivers' tight ends because their ability to make people miss in the open field can really generate big plays for an offense. Now a first down carry. It's Camara. Two yards on the pickup there. It'll be second and eight. Well, they still have time to get him established, but in my estimation, they've got to pick up the urgency here. They've got to get quickly in and out of the huddle and run off a bunch more plays. Breeze to throw on second down. Smith catches left side. And he'll go down shy of the 40 at the 41. That throw good for only a couple. It brings up third down. One thing you're hoping for when you run drag routes, you're able to hit a receiver in stride, and he can pick up a lot of yardage after the catch. But in this situation, the defense was effective, able to stop him before he could get a good head of steam going. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. From the gun on third down, Breeze. Over the middle, it's complete. And they went the wrong way there. Losing yardage back at the 43-yard line. Call it a loss of two on the play. And that'll bring up fourth down. So on trots the field goal unit, and wow, this is going to be a challenge here. They spot it on the midfield stripe, so it is a 60-yard attempt here. That's on target, but it's no good. He had it on line, but it came up just shy of the crossbar, and this score will stay right where it is. the Falcons up now first and 10 right at the 50 yard line from midfield now here's Ryan and it pops free the collision there jarred the ball loose and brings up second down so he can't hang on, and as I watch that unfold, I remembered an expression that I've heard, maybe from you, I don't know, but you're going to get hit anyways, might as well hold on to the ball. All right, you know a coach <laughs> said that, right? Yeah. Not an actual player? Not a no chance at all. Way easier said than done. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and ten. To throw again. Ryan. And they finally get to him as he's taken down. This has been a tough one for this offensive line. It appears almost like they've been on roller skates this entire game, the way they've been pushed around. Six sacks given up in this one. So the sack pushes him back, and now third and long for Ryan and the Falcons. To throw is Ryan. Oh, the ball comes out on the hit, but they'll say it's incomplete. Kind of a fine line when you're setting up the screen. You don't want to throw it too early to have the defense react too quickly. And you definitely don't want to throw it too late. And that way it's not formed perfectly. Got to make sure you hit it just right. Here's Matt Bosher now. As the drive goes backwards, so he's on to punt it away. 
This is taken at about the 14. A good return there. Call it 13 yards. And the offense will take over with a new set of downs. Out onto the field comes New Orleans. And the last go around for them, they tried that really, really long field goal. Couldn't connect. And in retrospect, I think a lot of people would say, well, why would you try one that long? You hurt yourself in field position. The ball comes out, you know, there. That, that only helps the other team. But I look at it as maybe it's a double shot of confidence. Confident the kicker could make it. And even if he missed, confident in their defense that they could hold him. So now they have to contend with second and 13 after the first down run goes backwards. Breeze now. Throwing left side here, and it's complete. And he'll get this one way up just shy of the 45-yard line. His fifth catch tonight, and it's good for a first down. You cannot write these guys off just yet, not with a quarterback like that under center. You mean it actually crossed your mind with him running the team that you could actually maybe write this game off? Not yet. Not a chance. Not with him. We've seen it too many times. Got hit. Ball pops out. Incomplete. We have not seen a whole lot of wide open receivers. Everything seemingly has been contested. And that's another nice job there to force an incompletion. They've been very cohesive, knowing each other's moves all game long, and they've been on the spot just about every time. And they've held them in check on the scoreboard. So after the incompletion on first, now second and ten. From the gun, it's Breeze. Oh, he's got a man wide open, complete. And they'll get him down as he's inside the 40. He had the touchdown earlier. This one's going to get him a first down. All right, this is the time of the game where they're down a couple of scores. And they've really got to get some yards in chunks. And they know the defense doesn't want to give those up, but they've got to find a way to take them anyway. Now the question is, can they string a few of those together? Now a handoff. Here's Camara fighting his way down to about the 35-yard line. Give him three on first down. It'll set up a second and seven. He has just been completely taken out of this game. We're in the fourth quarter. He's single digits in the rushing department. And I know we look at him because the numbers do go to his production. But how about the guys blocking for him? They don't just have his number as a ball carrier. They've got the number of the offensive line and the other guys because they're getting to him before he can get started. On the ground, this is Hill. And he'll be taken down at the 34. Just a one-yard pickup there, and it's going to make it third down at six. He may be a bit undersized compared to the modern-day NFL defensive tackle, but what he lacks in size, he definitely makes up for in his ability to make tackles in the run game as well. The Saints on third down. They've had their troubles. Just one for six. This will be third and six. Here's Breeze. His throw caught at about the five. Touchdown, New Orleans. In for the score. And the Saints are back within a score. As a fan, is there anything prettier than a well-executed post round? No, it's a thing of beauty, especially when it's done like that for a touchdown. Uh, the throw, the catch, and how about the run after to get it to the end zone? Lutz good on the extra point. And now things get a bit more interesting here in this fourth quarter. Lutz now to kick this one away. And no return on this one as the fair catch is signaled for and taken. 
Now the Falcons offense gets ready to head back onto the field. They've been asleep for a little while on this side of the football, Charles, and the score is just a one-score game now. Haven't had any points this half. What gives? Let's go old school here. All right, let's get back to the basics. Get back to running the football. High percentage throws. Find the guys that eat pressure and make plays for you and make sure they touch it. And he is met at the line of scrimmage, and he goes down right there. Big Sheldon Rankin's there to bring him down. Well, Brandon Pace comes into play now because they've got the advantage. They've got the football, but they've got to be very careful about what speed they're going to play. You know, my, my music teacher back in New Paltz, this is by Thema Bagley, used to say, don't go prestissimo when you really want to go Largo. And what she meant by that is don't go too fast when you really want to go at a nice, slow, deliberate pace. I am speechless. I am without speech. And he will lose yardage here back at the 23-yard line. He lost two there, and it's third down. And this is why the head coach gets paid the big bucks. Look at where they are in this situation, partner. Do you throw the ball here in a long-distance situation? Do you run it again and trust your defense and make sure you take care of the ball and punt it away? What kind of options do you have here, and what do you trust more on your team? Yeah, they may have just pushed him back into that throwing situation. We'll see. The Falcons on third down. They've struggled to the tune of two for eight so far. This is third down and 12. Now it's Ryan. And finding the tight end, Hooper. And now a fumble. The ball's out. And this is picked up by the Saints. And he'll score. Touchdown, New Orleans. So they were down by a touchdown. Probably just hoping the defense could hold them, maybe force the punt. Instead, they force the turnover and take it into the house. Well, the plan was perfect. That's exactly what they wanted. Instead, they got a lot more than that. Big-time capitalization by taking the ball away and putting it in the end zone. A very important extra point there, up and good. And, partner, we've got a tie game here in the fourth. So here comes the kickoff now, all even here in this fourth quarter. And a fair catch signaled for... A gut punch. You seemingly had it working. You were in the midst of a very strong drive, then suddenly the fumble, and you're watching the back of a defender's jersey as he brings it all the way in the other direction. There's not much more I can add to that. I thought you summarized it perfectly, partner. You've just got to regroup and start putting another drive together. That's all you can do. Well, we had a number of good games in the afternoon sessions, but this Sunday nighter might top them all. We come up here on first and ten. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he's able to plow forward up to about the 29, just shy of the 30. It's a pickup of four, and it'll bring up second down. Tough running there. That's a hard-earned four yards. Yeah, those are the unsung kind of runs. They don't fill up the stat sheet, but they do set you up in good position on second down. Second and six, just inside the 30. Here's a give to Smith, and that one blown up quickly as he's going to be stopped before he could even get started. They'll lose a yard, and it brings up third. Well, we just saw a great example of what we talked about with his coach prior to the game. He's definitely one of the better linebackers at reading a play and flowing to make the stop before it turns into something big. One of the bigger plays in the game thus far. The crowd getting into it as we come up on a big third down. Here's Ryan. And the third down pass falls incomplete. There's definitely contact there, but it's the fourth quarter of a kind of tight game, and sometimes the officials just say, let them play. Kind of like your mom used to, you and your brothers, just take the broom to you and send you out to the backyard and tell you to settle it yourselves. <laughs> I like that, yeah. There was contact. I don't know, like you said, enough to warrant the flag. It was close, though. Yeah, this is taken at the 23. Give him 11 yards that time on the return. And possession will switch hands first and 10. 
Now the Saints, they trot their offense out here. The last possession, these guys were able to tie the game with a touchdown, and now they'll have a chance to move out in front. Yeah, let's give a big assist to the defense who got the ball back. The special teams went out there, handled things. They've got it. They've got momentum. I know they're eager to get out there and put it on display. They start the drive on the ground. Kamara. And he fumbled it. It's on the ground. But fortunately, the Saints were able to hold on to it, so they will indeed keep possession. Wow. That ball gets knocked free, but a teammate comes along and scoops it up. Almost like, it's almost like baseball. Guys at bat, people are on base in scoring position. One guy doesn't get them home. The next guy comes through and picks him up. And avoids the turnover. First and ten, here's Breeze. And that is incomplete. Well, too much oomph, too much mustard there on that pass. Yeah, it really turned it loose, didn't he? Really cut loose with that one. Sharp, strong. Didn't lead to a completion, though. Made it very difficult. So now second and ten after the incompletion on first down. Ready. You waiting? Ready for touch. Working from the gun. It's Breeze. Over the middle complete. It's Smith. And they'll get him down as he's inside the 40. That one good for 16, and the drive will continue. You can see the time and effort and thought that they put into their passing game because it was evident right there. It looks like a simple pitch and catch, but you and I both know that they have planned for this and worked hard to make it happen. Here we go. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. First down, Hill, and he'll get four here down to the 35-yard line. When we see those runs to the perimeter, when we see those runs to the edge, we think about big breakers, don't we? In this case, it was a modest game, but it does open up possibilities here on second down. time for a break we'll come back and see how it all shakes out after this stay on the ground. This time it's Camaro. And he'll be a little shy of the 25 here at the 26-yard line. It's an eight-yard pickup and leads to a new set of downs. But they picked up a little bit of yardage there, and now in this situation, should be in no hurry to run a play really fast. Let the clock wind down. They'll run on first down. Hill, and he'll take this down just shy of the 25-yard line. And now a timeout defensively by the Falcons as they'll talk things over prior to this upcoming second down play. Camara, and his 
been like this all night long. Nowhere to run as they stop him behind the line. And the Falcons going to use another timeout as he'll talk it over here before what will be an important third down. Big play coming up. Here's third and ten. I would expect to see some pressure here. On third down, here's Kamara. And they'll bring him down at the 18-yard line. And he gets a good chunk of yards there, eight all told, but they're still looking at a fourth down. Falcons going to use their third and final timeout as they get the stoppage with just over a minute to go in the game. So a big one coming now for Will Lutz. This for the lead in the final stages. And this one is no good. He missed it. And a costly one there as this game remains tied here in the fourth. So it was a golden chance to go ahead here in the final moments, but he misses for a second time in this game. Brandon, either one of those go, and they might be on their way to a victory. Instead, they're going to have to hold on here defensively just to force overtime. seven-yard line. Give him a couple on the catch. It's second and eight. It drives some people crazy to see those short throws underneath. They've got to find a way to gash the defense downfield. They'll break the huddle. Come up on second and eight at the 27-yard line. Ryan to throw. And he almost intercepted it. They haven't picked a ball off yet. That probably should have been their first. And it's third down now. The Falcons on third down. Just a 20% success rate at 2 of 10. This is third and 8. Here's Ryan. And this time he's got the hookup. It's complete. And he'll get it up near the 35, right at the 34 here. The Saints going to call the first of their timeouts as they get it with 16 seconds remaining on the clock. Here's Matt Bosher now as he's on to punt for Atlanta. That'll go as a punt of 32 yards. And control of the football, switching hands here with very little time remaining in this contest. The Saints coming out now to take the field. They have a little bit of time here to get into field goal range. Not much. A tie game, you don't want to do anything crazy, right? I agree with you on that one. Risk-reward, okay? If you go for it, what is the absolute reward on this? But the risk is probably greater run the clock out, get to overtime, and try and win it there. All right, we'll see if they do just that. The fourth down run successful. Now they look to pay it off on first down. Breeze to throw. He's going to fire one deep, middle of the field. And nearly another interception. They've been around the ball all game. Incomplete pass there is probably the best scenario going because if he catches the football, clock's probably going to run out in that situation. They'll try again from the 36 on second and 10. Now Breeze. But it's caught on the right side of Smith. And he will lose yardage back to the 34-yard line. It's a little teaching moment here. Overtime rules. Remind us how this goes, partner. 
Okay, so in the past, we had sudden death. First team to score wins, but no longer. Now, if the team receives the ball, scores a touchdown, they win the game. If they kick a field goal, though, or don't score, the other team gets a possession. And after both teams get a possession, then we're into sudden death. First team to score wins the game. And this return nets positive as he gets past the 25 and up to the 27-yard line. Atlanta now coming out on the field. Except for their first drive here in overtime. And this is where the crowd can really become a factor. They've had to battle it all day. But I know what you're saying. In overtime, that gets doubled, doesn't it? At least. Because now the crowd really wants to be involved and help their team. And that first drive can dictate the whole thing. Because they know that this team's... And the Saints pressure gets him. Brought down for a sack. Offensively, they're going to have to figure this out before next week. Seven sacks in one game. Yeah, and that's more than any quarterback should have to bear. And if this continues on, there will be another quarterback in the game because no one can stand up to this week after week. Pass protection has been a problem all night long as they come up facing second and a bundle. They'll run it now out of the gun. And a short pick up there as he'll take this up to right around the 20. And they only get a yard back there. They'll be left with a third down and long. Well, that didn't appear to be a run blitz. He just darted in once he saw the run develop. That appeared to be a case of see ball, get ball. The Falcons on third down. They've converted just twice and have had plenty of opportunities. This is third and 17. First throw in overtime now for Ryan. He completes it to Bryant. And he'll be corralled well upfield right around the 40-yard line. A good pick up there of 20 yards. He's such a good route runner. Shows it there on third down. Very proficient and a good pass. And you know what I've observed over the years in the NFL? The better a route runner you are, the more confidence your guy's going to have in you to go to you in important times because he can trust you being in the right spot. And they connected there and picked up a first down. And they'll go on the ground. He'll take this from the 40 up to the 45 for a gain of five. Despite the blitz, they're still able to pick up a nice, solid gain. The disadvantage of blitzing often alters the normal spacing and run fits and leaves creases like they were able to exploit right there. A handoff to Smith. And no room that time, getting it to about the 46. It'll only be a gain of a yard, and it sets up a third down and four now. In order to play really good run defense when you're playing a 3-4, those three guys up front, the nose tackle and the guys they call the defensive ends, they're usually big, big people because they're going to have to eat up a lot of blockers because it's usually five on three. And when they do their job well, guys who play on the inside, those inside linebackers, they're able to just roam and hit. It's third and four. Big play here. Try to keep this opening drive of overtime alive. Out of the gun. It's Ryan. Flushed. And he can't find a receiver, and he's brought down. The amount of sacks that they've absorbed in this game is absolutely extraordinary. Let's just face it. This offensive line, flat out, cannot handle this pass rush. It's been demonstrated time and time again. Here's Matt Bosher now. On for a very important punt here in overtime. Out onto the field comes New Orleans. Their defense did its job, got the stop. All they need is three, and this is over couldn't have done much else other than score themselves and end it but they turned it back over to him and now all they need is a field goal to win the game an excellent job by the defense can the offense finish things off yeah, part one is done now part two 25, 02, 02. 21 21 
First throw of overtime for Breeze. He sets to fire deep. And that one falls incomplete. Looked like he might have had position there, but he couldn't hold on it at second down. One thing I know from experience is that when the deep ball is thrown and you're the defender, you've got to fight that little bit of panic that emerges. You've got to play the ball really well. It's a 50-50 jump ball play. And guess what? They took a shot. How are you going to win it? And in this case, they managed to get it done. Once again, they'll come up on the 26-yard line, second and 10. They'll run. This is Kamara. And he stopped immediately there. Call it no gain on the run there, and now they'll be looking at a third down. Wasn't able to get anything, no gain. Fumbled once already. Maybe he's being a little careful. Not necessarily on that play, but I'm sure that's in his mind somewhere. Oh, without a doubt, because protecting the football is job one for anyone who's carrying it, and that's exactly what he tried to do on that play, but it didn't gain him any yardage. The Saints on third down. They've struggled to the tune of two for eight so far. This is third and ten. Here's Breeze to throw. Wide open receiver complete. And all the way down to the 22-yard line. A huge play there in overtime. 52 yards. Two minutes to go here in overtime. We'll be back after this. Here we go. So barely time to catch our breath. Here's first and ten just outside the red zone. Running with Camara. And he'll at least get him inside the red zone here, down to about the 19. A gain of three, second down. And that carry probably not so much for yardage just to get the spot that you want to kick the field goal. And any yardage you gain there is really kind of gravy. And this just becomes what my old coach used to say. Get into position to be in position. <laughs> and that's what they want. The right spot for their kicker to line up the field goal. A busy night continues for Kamara. And he'll get this down only to the 18. Just a one-yard pickup there, and it's going to make it third down at six. Now a second timeout called for by the defense. They'll be down to just one remaining as we step aside here in overtime. Here we go. The Saints on third down. They've converted a third of their opportunities, three for nine. This will be third and six. They'll hand it off now. Hill. And he'll get him inside the 15 down to the 14-yard line. Call it a gain of four, and it'll bring up fourth down. Now the defense will burn their third and final timeout. It'll be their second and final timeout, remember, here in overtime. We'll be back. So the field goal unit is on the field, as this is a big spot right here. this game would be a good one it did not disappoint into overtime and it took the field goal to win it and we always pay lip service to how important it is to play defense and usually we focus on the big offensive pyrotechnics right but in this case they got the ball back on defense gave themselves a chance and they capitalized on it with a victory and i don't care what distance that field goes from in overtime the knees are always knocking <laughs> but he pushed it through not only that think about your snapper your holder a lot of nerves for them too because they have to do their job in order to give him one last chance to put a foot to it 
So for New Orleans, the win form is number six on the year. And they'll get another home date next week as the 49ers will come to town. Meanwhile, for the Falcons, things are definitely going south quickly as they fall now to one and six. And they'll look to regroup next week as they head to Houston to take on the Texans. And for Charles Davis and our entire crew here at EA Sports, I'm Brandon Gordon saying so long, everybody.